right there. And as you can see, I made a mistake. I, I haven't fully mastered this one yet, but I do know how to show you what's going on. Um, you'll obviously have some more time to work on this one uh, than I did. So hopefully your brother, uh, you know, will have a uh, nice surprise ahead of him. Very cool idea, by the way. I, I like this. Very, very nice uh, idea. Um, I'm sure he'll love it. Um, so tutorial tutorial for uh, me and my uncle. Um, we can just kind of start off with the rhythm, okay? The picking pattern is known as a uh, Travis, Travis picking pattern. Now, if you haven't heard of it, a Travis picking pattern is a pretty uh, standard folk picking pattern and it has some variations that this song uses a few variations on that uh, Travis picking pattern. Um, so we'll kind of do that first. The song does do some other picking uh, patterns as well, but if we start with the Travis, uh, Travis picking pattern, we'll be, we'll be okay and we'll be in good shape for a while. And really you could play the Travis picking pattern um, for the entire song, but I mean, you know, if you want to get it exactly like Mike Wilhelm does it, you're going to break away from, from the pattern a couple of times. And so the very first thing we're going to do is talk about how the pattern works. So we'll do a C shape right here. X3, 2, 0, 1, 0. Okay. And the first thing you want to talk about is this pattern. Okay. When you count it in four beats, you're going to get 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. And you notice I'm alternating between the fifth and fourth strings. 1, 2, like like this, a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a. Now you notice I'm counting 1E e and a, and that means that every beat, there's actually going to be four, four possible subdivisions. Okay, so a total, if you count four beats per measure and four possible subdivisions per measure, uh, per beat, you'll get 16 total subdivisions uh, per measure. Does that make sense? So four beats, and each four, each of the four beats has four, 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 four possible uh, subdivisions. So there could be a total of 16 plucks. And you'll hear sometimes he'll do something more like simple. And other times you'll hear one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and that. And so you'll hear four uh, times four in some cases. So you have 16 plucks in a measure, whereas, you know, some measures, again, will be more sparse. So um, the very first pattern that I want to show you is the pattern that is used in uh, the C chord when he uses this in the C chord, okay? So he'll go like this. So one and two and three and four and, okay? So you hear it and you go one and, and you'll do the second string at the same time. So you go one and like that. And then you'll do one and two E and a. And so that was two E, fifth and third string, and a fourth and second string. So you go one and two E and a. And so when you get a hang of that, uh, of that, um, you're gonna switch chords, okay? And um, you're gonna switch chords in the middle of that pattern. So normally with a folk song, you get, you know, nice long measure for, for you know, nice, nice two full beats per chord. But this chord switches one beat into it. So you're gonna get a C chord, and instead of getting one and two e and you're gonna go one and two e and a. you see what I did there? I changed the chord on beat two. So one and two e and a. so 
it's the same picking pattern, but now you just have this one finger here. Okay? So we went from a C to a G over B. It's called a G over B. So X to zero, 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 X. Okay, you don't play the first string with the sixth string. So you're just going to go one and two E and uh. So try that one and two E and uh. Okay? And then you're going to do a new Travis pattern. We're going to do an A minor, okay? And it's it's a variation on Travis pattern, so it's not quite the same. You're going to fill in all of the 16th notes now, okay? So we'll show you I'll show you how to do that. It goes fifth, third, fourth, second. So in order, what that would do is you go to the original pattern, and that's hard to put together if you've never done that before, but you go 1 and 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, so beat 3 is 3 E and uh, okay, so you're going to go 1 and 2 E and uh, 3 E and uh, you notice I switched chords to the A minor. So again, um, you know, if you're not familiar with this picking pattern, definitely spend a lot of time with it. So that A minor is X, 0, 2, 2, 1, 0. And I'm sure you've seen this chord before. Um, but it's going to go... That picking pattern, okay? And then you're going to change the bass note, okay? The fifth string is the bass note right now. You're going to move it to your pinky, 3rd fret, 6th string. And all the other fingers are going to stay the same. You notice my thumb is still alternating, alternating, alternating. So so you notice my thumb is going from the 5th to the 4th to the 6th to the 4th. So... 5th, 4th, 6th, 4th, 5th, 4th, 6th, 4th. So you're going to get 1 and 2 E and a 3 E. Sorry, 3 E and a 4 E and a. Okay, so that's the first measure. That's a lot of picking stuff going on, the first measure. I'll slow it down. 1 and 2 E and a 3 E and a 4. And, uh, okay, so you hear this bass note going down, and then when we get to this note, you can use your thumb, you can play a D chord, so you're going to do a new picking pattern here, okay, and this is not your standard Travis, but this new picking pattern is going to go, just like the Travis is going to alternate, but the the higher fingers are going to do something different. So they're going to go 1 E and a, 1 E and a, and that was first and the second string on the D chord, which is 2 X 0 2 3 2. Okay? So 1 E and a, 1 E and a, okay? 1 E and a, 3. Sorry, 1 E and a, Sorry, I counted the wrong beat. One E and a two. One E and a two E. One E and a two E. One E and a two E and a. Sorry, I put the wrong one on the thumb there. One E and a two E and a. One E and a two E and a. One E and a two E and a. See, watch my thumb is still doing this. Playing it all together, you get one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one two E. Sorry, one E and a two E and. I'm confusing myself with, with the with the tongue, but it's one E and a two E and 
and then you get this F chord, okay? And it's going to be 1x3211. Ooh, 3E, okay? It's going to go 3E, which is my sixth string and my first and second, so 3E, we're on beat 3, 3E, and 3E, and, so that's my fourth string, 3E. thing you do. 3E and a 4E and 3E and a 4E and 3E and a 4E and okay and so that sounds like a lot I know uh, it might be uh, quite a bit to remember but you know with some time I'm sure you'll be able to memorize it so 1 and 2 E and a E and a 4 E and a 1 2 sorry, 1 I'm going to count that again. 1 and 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 and a E and 3 E and A and like 3 E and a 4 E and 3 E and a 4 E and 3 E and a 4 E and yeah, it's tough. So 1 and 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 and a 2 E and 3 E and a 4 E and I got it. <laughs> so um, that's um, the intro, which is also a part of the verse, okay? And um, when you want to do the intro, you can lead up to it with a little bass walk like he does. He goes... And that's it. So he just does sixth string, third fret, fifth string open, fifth string, second fret. So he goes. You know, and that's it. And so <clears throat> this next part is pretty easy. It goes back to the, the Travis picking pattern that you used on the C chord. So it's gonna be one and, like that, one and, and then you're gonna add your pinky. So one and, two E and a, one and, two E and a, and it's just the same pattern that you did before, but you're changing the bass note on beat two. One and, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, so you see what I did is I did my thumb on the second fret and then on the first fret. So you go one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one and two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so that's the A minor that walks down, and that is the first part of every verse. So. Da 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 Now after that you follow it up with the C which we've already done. We've already done this part, right? And then da 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 all all done before. Da, 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 da. Now the A minor. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. We've done this part as well. C. Da, 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 da. We have not done this part. Okay, now that's really weird, but it goes 1E. E. 
uh, so one E and a two E and one E and a two E and one E and a. Now you know I'm going one E and a, which is the first string and the second string. One E and a two E. So now nothing's happening on beat two. One E and a two. So that's how it's different from the Travis pattern. Travis pattern will always have something on beat two, but he breaks from the Travis pattern here, and it goes one E and a two E E back to the first string one E and a two E and now he does this shape. It's like a G shape. You'll recognize it's it's not quite a G because he doesn't have his middle finger here. But it's basically a G shape where you go three X zero 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 three. Okay, and when he's doing this chord, he's doing one E and a two E and and when he does the and of two, he places his middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. So again, one E and a two E and one E and a two E and one E. Three, I pluck both of these at the same time, the third and first string. So again, one E and a two E and three. One E and a two E and three. Like that. One E and a two E and. Sorry, one E and a two E and three. Okay, three. And uh, you can do a hammer on the 5th string from the open to the 2nd fret there. Okay, so 1 E and a 2 E and 3 and a and a 1 E and a 2 E and 3 and a Then after you do the and a, it still goes on a little bit longer, it's very complex. Um, and a and then E and, so you skip beat four, you go and a uh, four blank. Nothing's happening on beat four. And uh, four E and first string, fourth string, and uh, four E and, and uh, four E and. So you notice on four there's nothing. And uh, blank E and, and uh, so hammer first fourth, hammer first fourth so what that does after you put it all together is one e and a two e and sorry one e and a two e and three and a four e and one e and a two e and three and a four e and so that's probably the hardest chord in the song the hardest picking pattern in the song i think so if you got that if you can get that, you'll be fine. You will be more than fine because that's the trickiest part. And then after this part, he's going to go back to the original pattern on A minor. One and two E and one and two E and a one and two E and a like that. Okay. One and two E and a G chord three. For you, so to go one and two E and three and four E and one and two E and three and four E and yeah, that's how it goes. The next part is going to be a hammered on A minor. So you're going to have the ninth to the flat tenth or the second to the flat third. If you know some music theory, it's going to be the root. And just like the Travis pattern that we did before, you can do two strings together again, but it's going to be with the open string. You're going to go hammer one and uh, was where the hammer happens. One and 
that two. Beat two is on the sixth string, so one and a two E and one. See this, my thumb is alternating like this. Fifth, fourth, sixth, fourth, one, and a two, E, and one, and a two, E, and that's my third string and my fourth string. So, one, hammer, sixth, third, fourth, one. So that hammer again happens on the and -a of one. One and a, one and a, and then it happens again, okay? So it happens again. If you hear the song, he does it twice in a row, okay? So that happens on beat three. So one and a, two E, and three E. He's hammering on beats three and the E of three. Okay, so three E in a pairing, sixteenth notes. Okay, so one and a two E and three E. You hear that? Three E. One and a two E and three E and a three E and a. I'm doing the middle finger. Okay. You just continue. One and a two E and three E and a four E and three E and a four E and three E and a four E and three E. Pay attention, my thumb is going three E and a four E and so three E and a four E and fifth, fourth, sixth, fourth, three E and a four E and that so one and a two e and three e and a four e and one and a two e sorry one and a two e and three e and a four e and one and a two e and three e and a four e and okay and you're gonna let go of your fingers because if your fingers have lines in them and hurt by now which they probably should because mine do um, <laughs> you can take a break, come back to this, but he's going to let go of that chord as he's doing the pattern. So the right hand's still the same, okay, but he's going to let go of the chord at a certain point. He's going to go one and a two E and three E and a four E, like that. One and a two E and three E and a four E, and a, and a fifth third. I mean, four third strings, four string, third string. One and a two E and three E and a four E and a. And that's how you get that. Do you hear the notes changing? So listen. You hear. So that's how you get that note. So it goes. Sorry. So that's right. So I, I keep forgetting the part. It's just so tough. I I would have to watch my video at the part where I got it right. Over and over and over again because it's just it's really tricky. Like you do the Travis pattern the whole time, and it just breaks from the Travis pattern and just messes with your mind a little bit. So you know if this song is tough for you, like it is for me right now, don't even give yourself a hard time. It's tricky, very very tricky. So take your time with it, walk away from it. You know, come back to it if if you're really struggling with it. I know I'm struggling with it, so it's tricky. Um, but basically, I've shown you the entire thing, except for the very last chord, okay? But we'll put it together again very slowly, and I'll narrate it, okay? So you can kind of 
see it all in one chunk this time. So you're going to go... Okay, so that's that intro, okay? And it goes straight to that C section. It's going to walk down from the C. Let me try to do this out loud and, and tell you the whole thing. So, one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two E and three E and a four E and one and two E and a three E and a four E and a one and two E and a walking down the A minor and then. Okay, so like that, that weird chord, that weird G pattern, then A minor, G, you notice the G, I really use one finger there, because you don't really need to put the pinky there on that one, and then the hammer one, let go, so like that, so real slow, without stopping this time. So Sorry. supposed to do the hammer there. And there's one verse where he just lingers on this chord. The F, okay? But I just showed you the intro into the verse. That's what takes you into the verse, okay? So I'll try one more time real slow, and hopefully I won't mess up on this stupid G chord. Um, <laughs> it's not stupid, it's a nice chord. It's just, I gotta get it. Gotta get it. Alright, so... Pretty close, pretty close. I think I did it pretty close. <laughs> so, uh, you know, take your time with it. Again, I stress this is really, really, really tricky. And, um, you know, I really hope that um, this tutorial helps break down everything in like an adequate sense. Unfortunately, you know, I, I can't play this at super, super fast speed yet to show you kind of what it would sound like at full speed, but you already know what it sounds like full speed, so, you know. The only other thing is the ending chord, and then maybe a little bit on, like, improvisation, okay? So I'll show you the ending chord. It's going to end after the hammer-on section, okay? Get this thing out of the way. <clears throat> one and a two E and three E and a four E and a one Kind of does like that. One and a two E and a three and a four. And on beat four is X zero seven five five seven. So, so I just count to beat four and I go one and a two E and three E and four. That okay. Four. If I want to sing all the way up, 
Okay, so right there. You have beat four ending the song, and he kind of slows it down. One, E, and a two, E, and a three, E, and a four, like that, okay? Now, a little word about improvisation. He doesn't do exactly the same thing every single time. He just does variations. Sometimes uh, most of it can be explained by him moving his fingers to the first string when normally you would play it on the third string, or moving to the second string when you would normally play it on the fourth string, or kind of just moving your hand around instead of like, he'll do, does that make sense? First string instead of the second string. Sometimes he'll leave the second string out and he'll go, and just it. Does that make sense? He'll just leave certain things out. He'll move certain strings over there. But no matter what, the rhythm is always constant. It's always flowing. You never stop the song. And that's what's so difficult about this because you have these changes in the picking pattern. And mentally, you have to learn all the differences in the picking pattern before they become more memorized. And when they become memorized, then they can become quick, you know, just kind of play by rote. And you can tell when he's playing and he's singing on top of it, of course, you know, to make things even more uh, challenging. He's doing it by rote. You can tell he's done it so many times, the repetition is just automatic. And he's throwing in these weird little things because he's just got the rhythm that's going constantly, you know. So um, the, al the, the alternate things that you can add is really just playing around with your right hand so that you're moving in different places, you know, where you're leaving certain notes out. Just keep the bass note going. And when you keep the bass note going and you add some stuff uh, up top or you move strings up top or you leave strings out, uh, you'll have a lot more um, to play with. But that's a, another level. That's, that's a very advanced level of knowing this song and being very, very uh, intimately acquainted with Travis picking. If you, if you have a, a good background with Travis picking, this stuff is, is a good challenge. I think you should go, go for it and try to improvise. But if you don't have a background with Travis picking, I would say don't worry about that too much. You know, I'm pretty sure your brother won't care either way. So, um, with that said, uh, I think that concludes this tutorial. Um, it starts off and it ends with, so with that we'll end. Alright, thank you. Bye.